and just to kind of dial in towards the end of a workout, pretending it's like fourth quarter, extra point, things like that, just to make sure I'm going through my routine, just being smooth and hitting it how I want to. What's up, Browns fans? Nathan Zagura here with another edition of the Browns Working From Home series. And today, we stay with those guys who kick the ball. We've talked to the Scottish Hammer. Let's talk to our kicker, Austin Seibert. Austin, how are you doing, brother? Good, doing well. How are you guys? Doing not as good as you look. That blue sky, spectacular. <laughs> you got the mustache, the beard. I heard the rumors of a mullet being in the works. Sounds like everything's going great for you. Oh, yeah. We're doing it. <laughs> so we talked with the Scottish Hammer last week or so and one of the things we talked about is he misses obviously being around you and Charlie and the camaraderie and what I would call the ribbing that goes on between the three of you and I asked him to rank the best trash talkers or rivers in the room and he said you by a wide margin were number one the best in that room what so what is it what it makes he said you're just so quick the quick win he said he come up with stuff he's like what did you play in that he just couldn't believe how good you were burning everybody in that room I don't know. I guess I'm just a savage. Uh, no, I don't know. I've always, I've always kind of been like that. Um, I don't know. It can strike people as funny and it can strike people as not funny, but most of the time if people know me, they know I'm just messing around, but I feel like it's a good feature to have for a kicker. I think it is a good one. That's what I asked. I said, does the trash talk extend outside of the room? I said, well, Austin knows, you know, he's got to be careful because he doesn't want to, you know, stir a hornet's nest as it were, so to speak. But, he said, hey, he loves it. You tra- talk about dress. He said he usually comes back at you with something about your physique relative to his. And I said, that's a yeah. little bit of a low blood. It's a little unfair. It's a little unfair. Yeah. Yeah. He has a high metabolism. So <laughs> my genes, I don't have that. <laughs> uh, listen, you know what? You do have a howitzer for a leg. You put it right through the uprights. So how has it been for you? I, everybody I talked to, they miss the guys first and foremost. That's been the hardest thing about this. But how's everything been for you so far? Yeah, everything's been pretty good. Um, throughout this whole deal, I've had a field behind my house that uh, is really the only field open in kind of the Dallas area. So I've been getting kicking in for the last three, four months and um, haven't had any issues with finding a field. And I've been rolling pretty well with it. So, What's kind of your routine? Um, so generally I'll wake up, I'll probably kick in the mornings, um, nine o'clock or, uh, sometimes in the evenings just depends. This field will get pretty crowded just cause it's the only field open. Um, sure. so I'll wake up early. When you kick, how many balls do you want to kick a day? Uh, I'll hit probably in the whole grand scheme of things, warming up, doing a couple of drills and then going through full steps and full progressions. I'll hit maybe probably around 50 total f- footballs. I've been k- keeping a count about that. So do you have a certain kick that you end on that is like you give yourself a game? Is it a 50 yarder you have to make? What's your walk off kick at the end of every Dude, session? My walk off kick right now is the extra points. I hit okay. like three to warm up with, and I'll hit three to five to end with just to put a, a bigger emphasis on it and just to kind of dial in towards the end of a workout, pretending it's like fourth quarter, extra point, things like that, just to make sure I'm going through my routine, just being smooth and hitting it how I want to. Does it have to be, does the final one have to be literally a right down the pipe? If it sneaks in, is that is that okay to leave, or does it have to be pure as the driven smell? It's got to be good. Um, I'm kicking on high school uprights, so I've been pretty hard on myself with, if I see the ball kind of kind of in the vicinity of being close, I think i I got to re-hit it. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I hit a good one to end on just so I get that feeling and make sure I'm not being lazy with my technique, so – so do you have a ball retriever? I would imagine you want to – because how many balls do you bring out there? Scottish Hammers, by the way, has already putted some balls into trees, so he's already down some of the balls that he, he had to start <laughs> the, the, the program with. Uh, Brad and the equipment staff have been really good at getting us footballs. I have to kick on a field that has a track, so mine get tore up pretty fast, um, which sucks. But at the same time, they've sent me probably 15, 20 footballs, and uh, it's, it's been really nice. So I haven't had to shag too many times, twice, and I'm about done kicking. So <laughs> That's good. So you go through, you kick them all, and then you go collect them all. You don't have somebody who's out there with you, per se, who's, right. who's designated the ball of retreat. Okay, that's good. I like that. I like that. Yep. What is the farthest kick that you have made in this quarantine period? Oh, shoot. Uh, I want to say upper 70s with some wind. Just messing around at, like, uh, Prefer wanted me to work on driving the football uh, this offseason into the winds and things like that. So I'll hit some 
what I'll do is when it's windy up here on this field, it's elevated. So it gets extremely windy up here. Lots of wind gusts, things like that. So when I kick into the wind, uh, I'll work on driving the football and whatnot. And then when I'm done, I'll be like, yeah, what the heck? Let's hit some long ones. And we'll just go from there. We'll work our way back from 60, 65 to 70 and whatnot. And it's fun just seeing what you can do. But at the same time, I'm working on driving the football. and It's a good deal. So so when you talk about driving the football in the wind, it's kind of like I would imagine in golf where you want that more of that penetrating, boring ball flight so it is less affected by the elements. Right. Yep, exactly. The quicker you get through the goalposts with the wind in your face, the better. You hit a higher ball, you hit your natural ball. Sometimes the wind can really tear it up. Um, and that's that's a big, big thing I've been working on, just trying to get that thing through the upright as fast as possible when it's windy. How's everything been in the meetings with you guys and Coach Preef and Coach Coleman? I know you guys are a very tight knit group and have a lot of fun. Also, very serious. Coach Preef will lay the lay the hammer down when he needs to. But what's it been like for you guys in your particular zooms? Because you guys are always together. It's always you know the three amigos, you and the hammer and Charlie together. And so, what's it kind of been like in this period for you guys? Uh, it's been really good. Um, I meet with Coach Preef. Well, uh, probably, yeah, once a week, and then we do our team stuff, and um, it, we'll watch film together, my kicks, uh, kickoffs, things like that, make sure I'm doing everything correctly. And then when we go to our team meetings, we get in there probably about five minutes early for special teams, and we'll joke around with some of the guys, more make fun of Sione and all that. <laughs> but, uh, no, other than that, it's it's been good. It's, it's good to have these Zoom meetings and just uh, see the guys and just talk to them and all that, so – what are you giving? What are you giving Sione grief for? Uh, he's just one of those guys. Uh, we always mess with each other. He messes with me. I mess right back with him. So, <laughs> talk to you, fine man. Well, maybe one day we'll get it, and, and perhaps in a building, the Browns will get a, a recording of your guys' verbal barbs. Yeah, there you go. I'm sure it would be good stuff. So you're getting to do your kicking, and it's got to be interesting for you, right? Because you think about the offense and the defensive players, and I talked about this with the Hammers. They've got to have a whole new system, a whole new offense, new coordinators, new defense, new coordinator. For you guys, it's it's pretty much the same. The three of you are back. Coach Preef is back. Coach Coleman is back. Has that been a nice to have in, in kind of an uncertain time for you guys in your room and your specialties to have that continuity? Yeah, I think so. Um, just keeping the, the same structure that we had last year, uh, from my point of view, is really good. Plus, Prefer really believes in us and um, just a good coach to have. I really enjoyed having him coach me last year because he, he gets on me a little bit when I need to, and then he knows when to help me and when I need to when I need to talk and get through some things and, and whatnot. So he's he's definitely been a really good mentor and coach for me. How's he doing with these zooms? I feel like he's a guy that likes a good, some personal interaction. You know, yeah, uh, how's, he, he, how's he handling the zooms? He's not the most tech savvy person, but uh, he <laughs> he he's been handling the zooms really well. Uh, the meetings are basically like we're in person, um, but other than that, just we're not out on the field together, so we don't get to see Preef get mad every now and then. So it's, it's but uh, other than that, it's it's been going really well for him not being very technical, uh, technically advanced. So for for being as nice of a guy as he is, and he's a he's a tremendous human, he couldn't be a nicer guy. His ability to have a little bit of a blow up is, is pretty spectacular, I would say. Where does he rank in your in your coaches in your past in terms of ability to just say, okay, we're gonna go ahead and, and let some steam out right here? Uh, I'd say he's he's first. Um, but at the <laughs> same time, he he means well with it. Uh, of course, he's the best. Yeah, he, yeah, he's he's fine with it. But I mean, he does that stuff because he cares so much about what he does and about his players. And I understand that completely. So, well, Austin, what, I'm sure you're eager to get back here, you know, kind of as you take a step back and think about everything that, you know, you've been through with this, you know, kind of what is it? Have you learned anything about yourself in this period? I know a lot of guys say, you know, I've been with myself a lot or with my family a lot. And, you know, it's not something you get to do. Has this been kind of in any ways a, a positive experience for you? Yeah, I think so. Um, just really honing on yourself and making sure you're accountable to yourself, not only yourself, but your teammates too. It's like my teammates expect me to be working. I expect them to be working. That's how you come together as a team and you expect to win games because you're counting on guys. And I think that's where accountability starts. And um, just having Coach Stefanski and Coach Prefer and all these meetings and just the, the coming together of the team, um, I think there's a really good like leadership role forming. And um, – I think it's just really beneficial right now. Even though we're not together, we're still a team and we're still building as a team. So, 
That's awesome. How excited are you for the reunion? Is it going to be like a, a Chariots of Fire slow-mo, you, the Hammer, and Charlie running together and, and, and jumping and hugging when you guys get to see each other again? It might be in a close-up on the mullet once I'm back in Cleveland. Should be should be decently long. <laughs> is Charlie doing anything? Because the Hammer obviously has his, his flowing locks. Is Charlie going to uh, try to, to match you guys? Well, Charlie's kind of getting up there in age now, so I don't know if his hair is growing as fast as it used to. <laughs> And here we go. This is exactly what the hammer's talking about. There we go. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go with that one for now. We'll leave it at that. But you'd have to ask Charlie. I don't know if he's got any Rogaine yet. So, we'll so, <laughs> so is your plan to come back with a spectacular mullet and a, and a beautiful mustache? I'm going to try and make it as spectacular as possible. Well, we so, certainly we'll will. We will look forward to that. <laughs> Austin, it's always great talking with you, man. Be safe, be well, and I'm looking forward to seeing you back in Cleveland. All right. Nice talking to you.